Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ray uh, with uh, Jade Investments. Uh, I had a question. Somebody gave me a question and uh, asked me a question. I mean, uh, it was about a uh, debt to income, if, about getting a mortgage loan, uh, getting a uh, investment properties, a HELOC, and so on. Uh, so I'm here to answer that question for you. Uh, we'll go in a little kind of depth and, and explain things to you. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit that like button and share this video. The um, reason I want you to subscribe is because I'm here to help you. That way you can grow your portfolio, uh, get into real estate, also do uh, engine building, also do mechanic work, stuff like that to teach you on how to get an additional income. Whether it's investments, rental properties, um, HELOCs, um, building engines, doing car repairs, and you'll see that here in a second as, as I explain it. So let's go ahead and get started. And DTI, which is debt to income. This is what they're gonna wanna, the, the bank is gonna want this. They, they could care less if you got a college degree. They don't care if you went to college, they don't care about any of that. They wanna see your spreadsheet on, on, do you own assets or is it liabilities? Or are you so far in debt that, um, your debt is higher than what your income is coming in. So in other words, your money is already gone, it's already spent before you even get your paycheck. Uh, so here we are, here we, bad debt, which is also considered consumer debt, that's what they call it. So that's your cars, your boats, your RVs, credit cards, loans, jet skis, jewelry, uh, your personal home mortgage. Some of you might have heard, a hey, my, my personal home, it is an investment. No, it's not. It's a liability. If you're making payments on it, it's costing you each month, uh, whether it's repairs, whatever it is, it is a liability. The only way it becomes an asset is if you did a HELOC. If you use your personal home as a HELOC, you put, get a HELOC loan out of it, and you start using this to purchase other investment properties, other rental properties, then only then does it become an asset. So here's your consumer debt, your bad debt. Here's your good debt, rental properties. Even your RVs, if you have an RV and it's being rented out, that's considered a good debt. Uh, rental properties, other types of investments that are bringing you um, income each month will go in this category as, as good debt. Say for instance, you want to purchase land. Um, it's still debt because you owe money on it but then you're leasing it, so now it's bringing you income coming in. So this is what the bank is gonna look at, is your bad debt, it's gonna look at your good debt, and they're gonna to wanna to look at your income. So your income will be your W-2s. Most people, that's all they have is this part, just the W-2, uh, your regular job. That's the only income that's coming in. Uh, additional investments, say you have a, a not necessarily rental properties because this will be the rental income and then of course your self-employment income. Say you have uh, stocks, uh, rights, stuff like that that's bringing you income say every three to four months. Say you owe, uh, uh, which I had some somebody bring that up to me also as a uh, royalties. Uh, they had a, a, I'm trying to think of the word. <laughs> uh, which is not land, but I mean, it's not your actual property, but mineral rights. Yes, that's what it was, mineral rights. So say they sold their mineral rights and they're getting that coming in, that would fall in your additional investments. Um, so they're gonna compare your income to your good debt, if you have good debt, or your bad debt. So if your bad debt is higher than your income, then it's not gonna be good for you. Uh, I know people that have car payments that are $800 to $1,200. And I have another boat that's $350 a month, RVs around $400. They have $20,000 in credit card. They have loans, jet skis, and so on. They even have 20 to 40 k on jewelry that they're making each payment each month. Uh, say because they're, they're trying to be flashy they're trying to show people that they're rich but they're really so far in debt so that's what they're going to do they're going to look at your income 
They're going to look at your debt. So, and they're also going to look at your credit history. Do you have bad credit? Do you have good credit? Uh, do you have insufficient income? In other words, is there not enough income coming in to pay for that? So say you were denied. You're denied a HELOC or a mortgage or a loan, whatever. You're denied. So the next step is don't give up. Your next step is go ahead. What do we need to do? We're going to repair it. So what are we going to do? Sell your cars. If you have two, three, four cars, if you can only, if you can manage with one car, sell the cars that you have high payments on. There's companies out there that will purchase your car and maybe you'll owe a thousand, two thousand more, depending on how it is. Some of them just purchase your car outright if it's one of those cars that they need or a truck, whatever it is. Get rid of it. Sell it. Sell your boats, uh, stuff that you don't need. Stuff that's, that's consumer debt. Get rid of it. Get a second job. If you have to get a second job, or where, this is where it comes in. What I talk about building engines, doing mechanic work. If you watch my other videos, you can learn from them. You can learn how to build an engine. You can sell it. Start making additional income so you can pay your bad debt. So you can get rid of this. So see, that's basically you're repairing it. That way you can get your loan, your mortgage, your HELOC, whatever you need to do. Buy additional rental properties. So you need to look at it this way. You can get rid of your cars. You can get rid of your boats your RVs if it's not doing any good, or you can rent that out. Get rid of your, your credit cards. If you got other type of loans, get rid of that, jet skis, jewelry, sell it, get rid of it. Your personal mortgage, of course, you're gonna just have to pay that down. Or if it's valued enough, you can pull a HELOC out of it, and then you can go buy your rental property. So what you're gonna do, you can purchase this later. Once you have additional properties that's bringing you income, then you can purchase this. But I don't want to get into that because I have another video for that, which is the HELOC. I have other videos of how to purchase additional properties and, and different ways to purchase them. Right now, we're just talking about your debt to income ratio. So that's how they're going to do it. And the way they're going to do it is they're going to, the lender, there's different lenders out there, different mortgage companies, Fannie Mae, uh, your, your, uh, your personal bank, uh, credit union. There's so many of them. Get with them and find out how they want to, how the lender, how it works for you. So in other words, this lender, let's just say Fannie Mae, they're going to get your total debt, divide it by your total income, and multiply that figure by 100 to come up with your DTI percentage. Uh, Fannie Mae, theirs is, is, is a 45%. Fannie Mae does 45%. That's, that's the DTI that they're looking for. Okay? So let's just say... Yeah, but we're going to do a simple way, but you can do this with however much debt you have. So this is just a simple way to do it. You have a mortgage. Let's say your mortgage is $1,100 a month, right? As I said, this is just a simple way. Your, your mortgage might be higher, but what you're, you're going to get is your all your monthly expenses. That's what they want to know. How much debt do you have each month? How much do you pay? They're going to get your income. Your income, let's just say it's $5,000. Okay? What they're going to do is get your income. Remember, they're going to get your debt. This is your debt. And they're going to divide it by your total income. They're going to divide this number into this number. And, and then they're going to multiply by 100. From these two numbers, whatever's left here, they're going to do... Multiply that by 100, which on this one will come up with 22%. So if it comes up with 22%, Fannie Mae does 45%. And then that's what you're going to... So you're good. You're 22%. This is 45% debt to income ratio. You're good. You qualify. Okay? As I said, depending on what your monthly income is, I mean your monthly debt, so you're going to put all this, how much is each one per month. If you have this and you're only making $5,000, i will tell you right now, you're not going to do it. They're going to tell you no because you got way too much debt. Okay, hopefully this helps. Hopefully you can understand this. Uh, your DTI also, your underwriter, I mean, the, it changes. I mean, it, it changes depending on what lender you use. 
uh, a mortgage company, uh, your bank, a credit union, they all have different uh, qualifying, different qualifiers in order for you to purchase one, okay? In order for you to qualify. Everything's different. You just have to get with your bank and find out what it is. So in other words, if this doesn't work for you, don't give up. Remember, find out what do I need to do. Say you have bad credit. I'm going to do another video on how to repair your credit. Um, if, it's, if Say, for instance, everything works. You're good. Your debt to income ratio is only 22%. You qual you're qualifying that part. But then they tell you your credit is horrible. I'm going to make another video to show you how to fix your credit. Okay? So right now, I hope this video helped because uh, I did get this question, how does it work for this? So hopefully this helped. Hopefully you just go back and look at all these numbers and, and figure it out. Um, so I hope this helps and, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.